in the last uh in the last like cutscene, gas stopped by and gave us a like an old console that we could crack open to start designing our own games in but unfortunately the the thing is password protected so if we want to gain access to it we're gonna have to we're gonna have to actually crack into it so here's what we have we have a debug host here with a password register and here is the the interior the secret host inside the the redshift thing and that's what we need to get access to so it takes a three digit code and you have to submit each digit into pass uh one at a time so if the code is 473 i need to put 473 in across three different cycles into pass and then once i've done that i need to go inside, grab the RDK ID from file 199 inside it, and drop a file in my host that has the four, the, the three digit code, and then also the RDK ID. And one thing as well that they don't tell you is that if you, once you do open this, this is gonna be link 800 to get inside. I was a little confused about that, but since they tell you that the code for the first one is 473, if you really wanted to find that out, I could just go in here and tell it, uh, copy, four to pass copy seven to pass and copy three to pass and then you can actually see this guy go in here and open it and you can actually see it's link 800 and you can see that it's file 199 that has the rdk id that you want uh but that's not what we're doing here so here's how i how i approached this one uh, I created two execution agents. I originally had one, but I realized that I could do it faster if I had two. So execution agent A is the one who's entirely responsible for just trying passwords in uh, in the register. And it's doing so using the swizz command. And the swizz command is one that I haven't talked about yet, but it's one that is very useful for some of these cases. I don't want to get too in depth on the swizz command, but basically what it'll do is it will let you grab specific like digits from a number so if i have a number one two three four and i just want to get whatever the second digit of that is which is uh i guess two for one two three four uh unfortunately the the swiss command is right-sided so the first digit is actually the one on the right it treats the ones place as one and then the tens place as two the hundreds place as three so if i wanted to get what's in like the hundreds place for one two three four which is a two I would do swizz one two three four which is my number it could be stored in x and then i could and then i would say the uh i guess i could do it here as an example swizz one two three four let's say i want to grab the two that's in the hundreds place that's the third digit from the right and i'll save that into t and so if i do this you'll see i've grabbed two and let's say i wanted to grab two and three i would do uh three two into t and that'll grab digit three and digit two and save that as a number two three there you go and you can you can reverse these you can re you can repeat them if i just wanted to get the thousandth place digit four times you do swizz one two three four the fourth digit for each time and then that'll get saved into t the swizz command is a little weird when you first see it you're kind of wondering what is the purpose here's one example where the swizz command is useful so here's what's happening let me get rid of that uh execution agent a goes in and the x starts out as zero it then tries to swizz the hundreds digit which for zero is zero uh then it swizzes the tens digit and then the ones digit into pass then it'll increment it by one, so now it X is one, and it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna put zero, zero, one into the password. Then it's gonna do zero, zero, two. And then let's say X becomes one, two, three, then it'll swizz one, then two, then three into pass. And that's exactly, this, this mission, as far as I'm concerned, is a tutorial on the swizz command. So this one just, is just gonna increment over X, swizzing the three digits into the password until uh, in, until infinity. This one has no idea when we've actually gained access to it. That's what B is in charge of. So what B is doing is B is also keeping track of what iteration we're on. Uh, I figured I figured that was the easiest way that I'd be able to actually know instead of having 
A, like communicating what number it's on at any time. I'm having B hold on to as well. Like this is how many iterations we've done. It waits for uh, the three digits to be Swizz and then it increments its X alongside XA incrementing its X. Then it duplicates itself. The duplicate will also then sit there and wait and do the same thing. It'll increase its number. Meanwhile, the original is going to try and gain access to the locked cache here. Most of these are going to die on this step because this link is going to be closed. But when you do get the password, and we'll fast forward to that point, when you do get the password, actually, I should probably just demonstrate what's happening. So before I get to that point, let me show what A, let me demonstrate what A is doing. A is just Swizz 000 in, and now B is going to replicate itself. And it's, go it's got a password of zero and it's gonna try and go in, but it doesn't work, so it dies. A is now gonna Swizz 001 into the password and try that. That doesn't work. And now XB0 has duplicated itself. It's going to try in there with a password of one. And that fails. Now we go into two. And that one failed. And that's going to keep going forever. So now we'll go to when we actually get it open, which is 473. So it's going to take a second here. 473 here has gained access. He has 473. Sorry, he has 473. It's this one right here. That's why we're clicking on the execution agent to actually highlight which code block is actually quite nice. So 473 has gained access. It has the code saved in itself. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to make sure that this guy stops replicating and this guy stops uh, putting in passwords, especially so that we don't accidentally block this off. Uh, so he's going to go back and he's just going to quickly rapid fire kill the two of them and is then going to come back, grab file 199 and copy the ID into it. Then we're gonna drop the file. It's got a lock on it. So if we actually tried to leave with this file, we would error out saying that this file can't be moved. So we're gonna head back to the home. We're gonna make our file and we're going to once again use the Swizz command to reiterate this X into the file. So we're gonna put uh, the third, the, the hundreds place the digit, so the four, then the tens place and the ones place into the file and then we're going to copy the id that we had saved into t in there and we're done easy peasy uh a little bit of brute forcing here to get that to work but uh doing it this way having two agents one in charge of infiltrating and one in charge of like trying the passwords is how you get uh in the the lower amount of cycles here i had originally uh, tried it with a single one and it worked fine, but I was only able to get to here. So th there you go.